But first, it was six years ago tonight at this very hour, a Richmond woman went to a friend's house and hasn't been seen since. Her name is Keisha Jacobs. Tonight, in partnership with the Reopen the Case Foundation, crime insider John Burkett takes a look inside the house where the 21-year-old was last seen, and he spoke with the owner about the person of interest in this case. This was the last known place that my daughter was seen. Keisha Jacobs, she was 21 years old at the time of her disappearance. There has been a person of interest in this case. He was convicted of another crime in that house, strangulation of a woman. The girl was tied to this bed. The red flags have got to be going up all over the place. Abduction, this is a guy. He is a predator. I believe he gave her to someone. I believe my daughter's out there somewhere. Now. A woman who lived in the same house reached out to us after seeing our story. Have you ever thought to yourself, maybe I could have done more and Quiche would still be here or? Yeah, definitely. I talk to her two and three times a day. This is not my daughter. And the goal, this is the third day not hearing from her is tearing me up because this is not her. <sighs> It was her voice and know she's okay. But my fear is that she's not gonna come home. And I'm not gonna tell her that I love her again. Keisha Jacobs, she was 21 years old at the time of her disappearance. The initial detective on the case was Detective Billy Thompson at RPD until he retired about a year ago. Right now, they're kind of taking a two-prong approach. They have a homicide detective assigned to it and a missing persons detective assigned to it. The missing persons detective is uh, Clarence Key, and the homicide detective assigned is Anthony Coates. How important uh, is this house in this investigation? Well, the house was very important because this is where she was at. She was dropped off here. We know she was inside. So uh, it was very, very important. Um, a lot of evidence was recovered inside and outside. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Yeah. After about a year of doing stories on Quiche's disappearance, I learned of a person of interest's name. We were reluctant to report it at the time because RPD asked us not to, but now five years into this thing, almost six years. His name is Otis Tucker. Um, they, he went by Omar. But yeah, his name was Otis Tucker. I just recently found out he was in Florida. My most concern at this point is him doing it to somebody else or by the time the Commonwealth attorney decide to press charges or do what they need to do, he's gonna run. And it's gonna prolong the process when they should have locked him up or kept him in jail when they had. Otis has been questioned by the police, but not officially charged for the disappearance of Keisha Jacobs. He is also convicted of a crime in that house of strangulation of a woman and also bodily harm. He was accused of rape, but that charge was dropped due to a plea deal. If you can, tell me about, there was another person this guy was arrested for and ended, ended up serving time for. Yes, there was an incident that, uh, that was found out during the investigation of this case. And the, the person of interest is, a, I would probably say he is a predator. So. We were interviewing the new detectives on the case when the homeowner, Karen G, came up and asked what we were doing. And when we told her, because she has a similar story in her family of a missing person that was found dead, she offered to let us inside. Let's get you out of this rain. So is this the bed that she was alleged to be tied to? Mm -hmm. The woman in that case actually talked to one of our producers via Facebook Messenger. Here's what she said. But this is what's crazy. After he attacked me, we fist fought until he got me locked down into a position that I couldn't stop him from strangling me. And when I woke up, I was tied up. But about 30 minutes later, Quiche showed up but he sent her away. She also said to our producer, the only way I even got away was because I let him drug me with Rimron, a psych medicine, but I have a tolerance, so it took two hours. He untied me after drugging me. I got up, got dressed like it was nothing, and he let me leave.
Dijonet is the great granddaughter of the woman who lived in the house. How are you? She felt guilty when she saw the promo, so she decided to reach out. I'm John Burkett. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She met Otis through work. Uh, there was a time that Otis lived on Maury Street. They'd get together, hang out. Quiche was part of that group that would hang out with them. Uh, but eventually, it got to a point where they needed to move. That's when she suggested Great Grandma's place in Churchill. I would say not even a week went past, and I, I called the police and tried to get him removed from my Great Grandma's house. Um, they basically was like, um, he's basically a resident. They, they, they couldn't remove him from the house. And I'm like, well, he hasn't been here 30 days. Um, he only paid $30, and I'm willing to give him his $30 back because I don't feel safe with him in, in the house. When you hear the detective call him a predator, what do you think about that? I would say that's 100% correct. And it's crazy because, like, you, you really don't know people until, you know, they show you your true colors. Like, and he definitely showed his true colors that night. Dijonet was very honest. I thought about some of the things that were going on inside of her grandmother's house. Uh, she talked about drug activity, which I thought she's pretty upfront with. She talked about her relationship with her grandmother and how gr her grandmother always stuck up for Otis uh, inside the house because uh, Otis was basically brought there by Dijonet to look after the grandmother. But for whatever reason, she said her great grandma kept sticking up for Otis, so she decided it was time for her to go. I just want my baby to come home, and if you see anything or think you've seen her, please call so she can come home and she can be okay. In the years past, I've grown to know Tony, uh, Quiche's mom. Uh, this woman has been through a lot. She needs closure. That's, that's the bond. She needs closure for this one. And uh, I think both me and Detective Key and Detective Thompson, we all feel the same way that, that we really like to close this out for. Basically, the bottom line is that you can put a case together, but we put the case together Commonwealth attorney prosecutes the case. So it's just a matter of what they feel that they can do with the case, so. I know he gave the information to the Commonwealth attorney and the Commonwealth attorney that had it since April. And I've been calling and I've been calling and I've been calling and they keep telling me this is a process. What kind of process do you need? It's going on six years. September 26th would be six years. You know, Quiche disappeared in September of 2016. Her son was murdered at the Motel 6 on Midlothian Turnpike months later. I'll never get to tell my son I love him again. And I'll never get to hear it again. And I'm just praying Quiche comes home so I can tell her I love her. The guy that was serving time for her son's death, the killer in her son's case, is already out and about. He's already served his time and he's out. Uh, just over the course of reporting this story for the last two months, I feel like we've made a lot of strides in this case. And I think we're getting closer and closer to figuring out exactly what happened for Miss Jacobs. And uh, I, I think she feels it too. Uh, just by talking to her on the phone, I think she feels like we are getting closer to answers. Uh, you know, tonight when this airs, uh, this will be the sixth anniversary of her daughter's disappearance. So, in my opinion, it's six years too long, and uh, we need some closure for this woman. And Dejanay G has since been released from the Richmond Justice Center. Her attempted murder charge has been null prost. That charge is not connected to the Quiche Jacobs case.